Hi, this is Harold Hansen with Healing Free Dog School. On this short video, you're going to learn why we use verbal praise and petting instead of relying on treats when we're doing our training. Most of the dog training programs right now are using treats. It's treats for everything. I think you'll probably, if you stop and think, you'll think, I want my dog to mind me, even if I don't have a treat. When I start a new class, I always ask my students, how many of you want your dogs to mind you and to come the first time you call, even when you don't have a treat? Of course, everybody says, oh yeah, I do. See, the advantage of training without treats is that you always have your hand for praise and you always have your mouth for saying nice things to your dog. Good dog, good dog. Verbal praise and petting, I think, trumps the treat training. One of the problems with treat training is that treats can be in the wrong place at the wrong time. I was, I got a call from a woman who said that she saw her dog out in the middle of the road eating a slice of pizza that somebody had tossed out in the street. Now, you don't want your dog just doing that. That's dangerous. Stop and think of this too. Suppose your dog sees a squirrel. Now, if you have a hot dog and you're waving the hot dog hoping that the dog is going to come to you and the dog is having to make the choice of, let's see, you're standing there waving a hot dog and there's a squirrel, the squirrel is running and the squirrel is squeaking and making noise and I get to chase it. I would bet that most dogs would think that's a lot more fun than simply going and getting a piece of hot dog. Another concern is that dogs learn the wrong lesson. <clears throat> I, I teach in a school gym and I was teaching in the gym one night and I had, um, I was facing in this direction and I heard this very loud growl behind me and I turned around and I looked and there was a student with a big Rottweiler and the Rottweiler was simply sitting there looking at her and growling at her. And I thought, well, she's not doing anything to the dog. What's his problem? And I would look at her for a while and nothing would happen. And then I turn away and I hear this big growl again. So after a couple of sessions of class, one of the other students on the other side of the room called up and said, Harold, the reason that dog is growling at the woman is that she gives him treats. And if he doesn't get a treat, he growls at her. Well, to me, this is like getting mad at the vending machine. I didn't get what I want, so I'm going to raise a fuss. You don't want that. You don't want to be a vending machine to your dog. You are going to feed your dog, sure, but you don't want your dog running over and demanding it. Another problem that we have is, is this completely, what I think is, is a silly notion of exchanging. This is the sort of thing where your dog, say, runs over and picks up your expensive TV remote and gets ready to start chewing on it. What you're supposed to do is get the remote from the dog and give the dog a treat. This, to me, this is somewhat like somebody going out and robbing a bank and then calling up and saying, I understand there's a reward for robbing the bank and I would like to uh, turn myself in and collect it. To me, that's nonsense. What the dog is learning is, let's see, how do I get a treat? I have to go do something wrong, and then when I stop doing something wrong, I get a treat. That doesn't make sense to me. Think of this. There were other things more important to a dog than getting treats. One might be fear. If your dog is afraid of something, for example, uh, if your dog hears uh, thunder and your dog is afraid of it, and you're hoping that you can overcome the fear with a treat, it may or may not work. Your dog's fear may be way, way, way up at this level, and the dog's desire to eat may be way down at this level at that time. I lost my first dog because he ran across the street and got killed by a car. As a college kid, I didn't know what I was doing, and uh, I felt horrible about that. He was only eight months old. He was running across the street to go visit another dog. For him, socializing was more important than paying attention. Now, would he have responded if I had given him a treat? I don't know. But the whole idea here is that we want our dogs to pay attention to us. Really important for their safety. That's a big, big concern of mine. I want a dog that's gonna be with me 
if he sees a squirrel, he's not going to be thinking, I'm going to go chase the squirrel. Uh, if he sees another dog, he's not going to be thinking, hey, I'm going to play with the other dog. Some dogs like to guard things. That might be a more important concern to the dog at the time than getting a tree. Again, I think for some of the activities, like the fun activities, in agility or something like that, if you're using treats, I don't think there's a problem with that uh, because it's all confined and safe. But for safety, I don't want to rely on treats for my dog's safety. Think of this. You always have your hand. You always have your mouth with you. If you're out of treats and you're sure your dog sh knows, knows, right? <laughs> In other words, your dog thinks, you don't have a treat, forget it. So, at Healing Free Dog School, you get your dog to mind even when you don't have treats. I hope you'll think that's an important idea. Thanks for watching. This is Harold Hansen with Healing Free Dog School, H-E-E-L-I-N-G Free Dog School.